Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome viewers join us live on Sky Sports here to the Elephant and Castle Leisure Centre where Frank Maloney for Panics Promotions in association with Energising Red Square proudly presents Championship Boxing. Your first contest in the ring this evening, ladies and gentlemen, is a heavyweight contest over eight three-minute rounds. Introducing first in the blue corner, he's wearing the black trunks trimmed with red and white. As a professional from four contests, he has two wins and two losses. One of his wins coming by way of knockout. He weighed in at exactly 17 stone. From Kettering, will you please welcome Derek McCafferty. <laughs> and his opponent cross ring in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks trim with white. He comes to the ring on defeat as a professional with 11 wins from 11 contests, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He weighed in at 16 stone, 11 pounds and 14 ounces. And he comes to the ring as the former world amateur champion from Georgia. Would you please welcome Georgie Kandalaki. Your officials for this contest are appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Your tying game is Mr. Nick White and your referee is Mr. Ken Curtis. You take a step back. In the event of a boxer going down, the other one goes to a neutral corner. Okay? Defend yourself at all times. Shake hands. Ladies and gentlemen, eight three minute rounds of boxing. So, Georgie Kandalaki, may he be one of the heavyweight hopes for the 21st century. Frank Maloney thinks he might be. He's been blowing away everybody in double quick time so far in his career. Kandalaki in the blue trunks here with Derek McCafferty, who's won two and lost two from Kettering, though, born up in Aberdeen in Scotland. Remember, Kandalaki's last five contests have not gone beyond the first round. Former world amateur champion. Weighing 16 stone, 11 and 3 quarter pounds here, but looking heavier than that and a bit flabby. They've had some problem apparently getting his weight down for this contest. Well, uh, one thing, at this sort of level, he does have power. Um, and, you know, he'd be looking to try and just make this one a, a quick win as well but really you know he could deal with getting some rounds under his belt because his fights are all going over very very quick and you know, it's difficult to see how much he's learning from them well, the longest one of them was six rounds against Ladislav Husarek a big kind of wolf man figure from the Czech Republic who was durable if nothing else that night Lucky looking to explode that big right hand. He's a big name in his native Georgia. But one of his recent fights there in Tbilisi, there were 13,000 people who paid to get in. Another 8,000 were waiting outside. And this fight, too, will be beamed back to that country. Be sure of that. Well, he's starting to unload on McCafferty now. There's not a great deal coming back. McCafferty really needs to start letting some punches go himself. Lucky using the jab more often than one has seen in the past to try to set attack up. Virtually nothing coming back from McCafferty, who has lost his last two after starting his career with a couple of victories. Didn't do badly, mind you, to go the full six rounds with Mark Potter. Body shots and head shots coming in from Kandalaki. And this is very one-sided. He's got to do something for Cavity here. Well, he's made it easy for Kandalaki because he's not thrown anything back. I mean, Kandalaki's got nothing to worry about, just walking forward, pushing that jab out, and then bringing the, the other punches behind it. Well, he might as well be taking on the punch bag in the gym at the moment for all the challenge that McCafferty's giving him. There's no movement or anything coming from McCafferty. 
one-sided around as you're likely to see. Welcome back to the Elephant and Castle. You're watching Georgie Kanalaki, one of Frank Maloney's heavyweight hopes on the left of the picture. He's already established himself as a knockout specialist. His last five had gone just one round. He's going to have to go further tonight, Glenn. Yes, he is, but, I mean, there was nothing coming back from McCaffrey. He's got a cut on his nose to make things worse, but really, he's got to start throwing punches. So here's round two. Kanda Lucky with the two white stripes down his trunks, the 25-year-old from Georgia. Could be something of a gold mine fighter for Panic's promotions if they match him right. He hasn't had a really big test so far. They did put him in with the uh, washed-up Americans, Kimul Odom and Mark Young, in his last couple of fights, but... Uh, they really are well, well past it. Kind of lucky. Just doing what he wants, really. Poking out the jab, whipping in the odd right hand. And McCafferty, purely in survival mode. He's obviously heard about Kandalaki's reputation. Well, it's too many jabs from Kandalaki. I mean, he's just putting it out, putting it out. You know, he's getting through with the jab. He's got to then start putting things behind him. This is better now. Now he's starting to let the shots go. Frank Maloney hoping, no doubt, that Kandalaki can become a kind of real-life Drago figure from Eastern Europe for him. easy for Kandalaki at this point McCafferty throwing very little just contender to cover up the occasional jab going out but nothing that's going to worry Kandalaki see any signs of improvement in Kandalaki because when we've seen him in the past he seemed to have all the speed and mobility of uh, I don't know a pillar of salt really didn't he <laughs> well he's starting to show a bit more variety he's looking to step to the side um, you know so he's trying a few things Getting a kind of uh, education against fighters going nowhere or on the way back from there that Frank Bruno had early in his career when they had him in with casino guards from Carson City and the like and <laughs> jolting Jeff Jordan, clubhouse fighters from America. And that guy who was the Argentine heavyweight champion, only there were just the three heavyweights in Argentina at the time we discovered. Well, it's still all kind of laggy, just doing everything at will, looking for big roundhouse hooks, but not getting through that cleanly. But what's he learning here? Nothing. I mean, nothing at this point that he couldn't learn on a, on a punch bag, because uh, McCafferty is just showing nothing himself. He needs to start throwing punches. Kind of lucky getting plenty of opportunity to practice his jab. And the computer reveals that so far, Derek McCafferty has landed three punches in two rounds. As many as that. <laughs> I mean, that really shows how negative he's been. And, yeah, I mean, it's not really a learning process for Kandalaki with this sort of opposition. Yeah, it's time he needs to start getting some opposition that's a bit, you know, a bit better. 
He's come in here with purely survival on his mind. I think he's had Georgia on his mind, hasn't he, McCafferty, <laughs> here for, for a few days before he's gone into this with uh, Cadillac. Cadillac hitting the gloves of McCafferty quite a lot with his jab. Maybe needs to just vary the attack and switch it downstairs, and he did that right on cue. man was the world amateur champion Sir Georgie Kandalaki you see signs that he might go on to become a big force in the heavyweight pro division well it, you know, it's very early stages I, I would have to say no and I, yeah I've, I've never been that impressed he's big but you know, he's never shown me anything that's gonna say he's gonna make big noises world level don't think he could go on to be a kind of galotta level type of heavyweight I mean he might you know I mean it's difficult to see with this type of opposition how it's really how he fares when he moves up a level that we'll get you know we'll answer those questions but you know, it's very difficult he's just blowing away guys in, in one round yeah. doesn't move like a world-class fighter not at the moment anyway but he's learning I guess <laughs> well a body shot comes back from McCafferty Cafferty who started his career with an impressive knockout of Gary Williams of Nottingham in one round. And he outscored Keith Long as well. That was a good result. Kind of lucky winks at somebody at ringside. Certainly haven't been over ambitious in matching him so far. There'll have to come a time when they do let him off the leash a little. Yes, at this point, they just want to, you know, get a big record of, of um, wins, you know, before they put him on the, the highest scene. It always looks impressive. You've got a heavyweight with a big string of wins. Mind you, if you can get 13,000 people watching when he's fighting the likes of Kim L. Odom, maybe they can keep him with that kind of opposition. You can <laughs> fool all the people all the time, apparently, in Georgia anyway. Good jab from McCafferty. Does a little more in this round. Now he's going to the body. Candelaki switching the attack downstairs. Just a little bit of blood around the face of McCafferty as they touch gloves at the end of the third. Here, Kandalaki and McCafferty getting the heavyweight action underway here with Glennon. And still to come, Danny Williams against Harry Senior. Should be a decent fight for the Commonwealth heavyweight title live for you tonight here on Sky. Georgie Kandalaki with the two white stripes down his trunks and finding it hard here to make a big dent in Derek McCafferty, who's been pretty negative so far but has absorbed everything that uh, Kandalaki can throw at him. It's a bit of a low one from the Georgian. Well, it just really gives you an idea of what sort of opposition he's been in with when he's, you know, he's blown away his last five. And, you know, he's landing some big punches here, but he's not making that much of an impression on McCaffrey just yet. At the last Olympic Games, Kandalaki went to the quarter-final and was beaten by the excellent Cuban Felix Savone by 20 points to four on the computer so that might tell you something yeah that maybe tells you, you know, a little more when he's at the, the top level these are solid shots from Candelaki but you know, he, he hasn't got that, that zip and that sharpness, you know, he's just, he's just pushing them out. Yes, it's all a little bit laboured and telegraphed, isn't it? Yes, very much so. I mean, you know, you, you want to, what you want to see is him putting the jab and then quick combinations together, nice fast ones, and they're not, you know, he's just one punch, then the next, then the next.
corner have obviously told him to go to the body to try to slow McCafferty right. even more and break his spirit. But what you'd like to see from Cadillac now is, is a switch in gears. You know, it's all one pace coming forward. You know, you want to see somebody going through the going through the gears with their combinations. Yes, as an audition for a possible future career somewhere near the top level, which is what the camp would be hoping. It's not really the most convincing case that Kandalaki is making. This is already going to be the second longest fight of Georgie Kandalaki's career because Derek McCafferty has now gone past the four rounds that Shane Willis lasted with Kandalaki on his debut. Well, McCafferty's very negative, but I mean, he's soaking up these shots. 27 to 4 in the body shot department. Kandalaki doing a lot more. Kandalaki, the Georgian, with the two white stripes. And Derek McCafferty, the Scotsman, based now in Kettering, Northamptonshire, who was an ABA semi-finalist in 1997. He's trained by Kevin Sanders up in the East Midlands. Get your up. Break! So McCafferty already in his career has been stopped in a round by Michael Holden of Manchester back in July. So Candelucky's effort here measured against that doesn't look so hot, does it? It doesn't. I mean, he does look very, very flat, like, even for, by his standards. <laughs> I mean, do you think that the top heavyweights in the world are going to have anything to, to fear? I kind of like him. No, I don't, but I'd probably... Going way back in the 1930s, they probably thought they had nothing to fear from Primo Carnera either. <laughs> they had the mob, I think, around them times. He, 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 he did have a little help from his friends, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I think he did. But we better not get too far into that. Blocking a lot on his gloves. Good defensive work from him. He's not really been in the fight in any offensive way. Save the odd body shot. He got there with a the jab. Maybe just beginning to grow in confidence a little, McCafferty, and give it a go. Well, we like to see him start to let the punches go and see what kind of is like. You know, it taking it, what his defense is like. But it would be much, much more of a spectacle if he was to do that. Let's see if McCafferty maybe can ask a question or two. You'd have thought that uh, Kandalaki had landed with enough by now to certainly have softened up McCafferty if he really is a heavy-handed fighter as we've, uh, well, we've assumed up to now with all these quick knockouts. Well, he's catching McCafferty with a few solid punches to the body you know and he's really landing and you know, McCaffrey's taking them well so that was a better round for McCafferty kind of lucky a long way from getting the job done meanwhile backstage as we get ready for our main event tonight here's Danny Williams coming up next 
Commonwealth heavyweight title fight against Harry Senior, two South Londoners. Williams tonight, though, weighing 18 stone, eight and a half, half a stone heavier than he's ever weighed before. How significant is that, I wonder? Well, it, it certainly, you know, brings into mind how, you know, is how, you know, what sort of shape is he in? That's, that's a lot heavier, and you wonder how he's going to fare with that extra weight. There's a little bit of a ringside whisper for Harry Senior tonight. Let's see what happens. Be interesting. Williams is the favourite, though. And if Julius Francis hadn't made the fight with Mike Tyson because of the negotiations maybe breaking down, which they didn't, Danny Williams was standing by to fight him. In that very same heavyweight division, round six, Georgie Kandalaki, white stripes down his trunks. Kettering's Derek McCafferty showing increasing defiance as it's gone on. Not enough of it yet. I think, to be fair to McCafferty, he's gone in here. He's known about Kandalaki's reputation, and he's basically plan A was look after myself and then see if I can take it anywhere from there. Well, I think that's, that's very obvious. I mean, he has been you know, almost totally defensively minded. And, you know, it'd be nice now, you know, just to see him have a go a little bit. You know, he knows what kind of he's got. You know, let's just see if McCafferty can start throwing some big punches. Well, if he can get through to the end of this round, McCafferty, he will be taking Kandalaki further than anyone else has. Kandalaki with his gloves down, really by his uh, waistband now. A liberty he may not be able to afford if and when he's ever moved up in class. Wouldn't hold your breath waiting for that to happen. Frank Maloney can always be heard singing the praises of Kandalaki and how good he's going to be, but I think he may have to rethink on this performance. Yeah, but that's his job, isn't it, to sell him? Yes, it is, but I, yeah, I do think that he you know, he has got very high hopes and does have a big belief in him. Yeah, but he's not showing anything to worry about here. Well, I think he does have a bit of belief in him, but he's not blind to the evidence of his eyes here. This has been a laboured performance, really by Kandalaki. What would he be like against somebody who could take his shots and then really force him onto the back foot? Something just a bit robotic about him, isn't there? Very much so. I mean, he just in, in so much one pace. You know, you want to see, you know, in good fighters, you see that the change in pace, how they can, you know, just go up and throw fast combinations and then back down again. But not with Kandalaki. wins the round again but McCafferty is getting through with some ease really so here's the seventh round Georgie Kandalaki the former economic student from Gori the birthplace of Stalin he's the one with the white stripes down the trunks looking to make it 12 out of 12 tonight. Well, that's how I've got I've given everything, obviously, to Candelaki, because, you know, McCaffrey's doing very little indeed, and, I mean, just hasn't looked as if he's coming here to try and win, just to get through the distance, it looks like. Candelaki really does need to step up the tempo now, start throwing some combinations. Really, I, th I think you know the corner should have just said to Candlelight, just walk straight over to him, start throwing punches, and keep throwing them. 
you know, but he, you know, he's not doing that. I mean, there's nothing coming back from McCaffrey, so kind of like he's got nothing to be wary of. You know, he's just got to go out there and let the shots go. Seems strangely reticent to do that. When he won his world championship as an amateur, he beat Alexis Rubalcaba of Cuba in a very low scoring contest, 4 1 on the computer. But it was Cuban opposition. So that reads quite well. Still quite a bit hitting the gloves of McCafferty. It is the longest fight of Kandalaki's pro career. Well, he's very, very flat here, Kandalaki. He just doesn't seem to have that much interest. McCafferty got there with the right hand in that exchange. He's 25, Kandalaki, Glenn, so they can't afford to hang around too much with him, although heavyweights, of course, mature later, don't they? Yes, they mature much later, and you know, he'll not be really at his physical peak till around the, you know, the 29, 30. So they, you know, there's still a, a while with him before you know, he's at his strongest, but you know, they've got to start giving him um, better opposition and really see you know, if he's got any proper potential. But basically, you don't think he has, do you? Well, you're pushing me into a corner again, but no, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it. No, I think, yeah, I mean, obviously, in the, in the answer, it's a short potential, but it's not carrying it through here. Got to make sure we avoid Frank Maloney for a few days after saying that. <laughs> well, you know, to be honest, I don't... You know, Frank Maloney's not blind, and I think he's... He's got to say this is not a good performance from from Candlelight. You know, there's no devil in his work. He's doing very little. I mean, you look at the, the punches land, 128 for Candlelight, with 37. So, you know, there's nothing coming back at him, and yet, you know, he's still not finding the target, not mixing it up well, and not getting the punches through that count. Well, maybe we'll hear what Frank Maloney does think about it after the fight. We'll let Adam Smith do the talking to him, I think. <laughs> Well, they're just getting caught with a, a jab from McCaffrey, just showing that his defence is not altogether tight. Kind of like he's been boxing since he was nine years old, but he still has a pretty raw kind of look about him, doesn't he? Yes, yeah, very raw. I, to be honest, you, when you look at this sort of performance, you'd be very hard pushed to. to to imagine him winning you know, the honours that he won as an amateur. You know, he doesn't look as if he's, you know, he has that sort of pedigree. This is the final round. Now, can Candelaki show us a bit more in this final round? I suppose if we were being very kind, that. It could be that the camp were looking for him to just get a few rounds under his belt and that he'd been boxing in second gear. But that may be a generous interpretation. But that being the case, you'd certainly look for him to now show more in this final round, wouldn't you? Yes, you would. And, you know, to be honest, you'd, you'd hope we could see anything from McCafferty. I mean, he's just been really, really negative. never really been able to get competitive here, Derek McCafferty. Had to take a lot, particularly to the body from Kanda Lucky, who looks like he wants to take the man from Kettering out in this last round. Well, he's trying to up the tempo a little bit, Kanda Lucky, but in fairness, you know, his two speeds in this fight have been slower and slower. <laughs> Candle lucky. 
Trying to drive the punches through the guard of McCafferty, who deserves to hear the final bell. Breathing quite heavily now, McCafferty. Well, at least there's a bit more tempo here from Kandalaki. Hasn't really come in in great shape, has he, either, Kandalaki? No, he looks he, flabby, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks flabby, and you know, he looks as if he can't keep the, the pace going. At times he has lifted a little bit, you know, he needs a... He needs to just to keep going. He's, he hasn't got the condition for that, I don't think. Well, what's that doing on? Come on. He's looking a little ragged himself here and there, Kandalaki. Breathing quite hey. heavily too. Come on, sir. Stop. It's over. And for only the second time, Georgie Kandalaki. He's taken the full distance, it was the longest fight of his career and we'd be lying if we told you that that was impressive.